Hello, I'm Bernard Rieke and I'd like to provide an overview on why we get sick and virtual reality, what we can do about it, and in particular looking into different theories about motion sickness and virtual reality, also known as cyber sickness or VR sickness, and what they predict, where motion sickness comes from, and what we can learn from this. One of the most well-known motion sickness related theories is the sensory conflict theory. So basically the idea there is that virtual reality sickness occurs and increases if you have a conflict between different sensory modalities. In particular the vestibular system that often tells you you're not moving because you're sitting or standing stationary and the visual or other cues that tell you you're moving. And so basically virtual reality sickness increases if the different sensory modalities are not compatible to each other or really don't match the mental model, the expectations or the predictions. So for example, if you make a few steps forward when uh, walking in virtual reality with the head mounted display on, you would expect to see the equivalent changes as you would in the real world. If uh, this prediction doesn't match what you actually perceive, that can be another reason for motion sickness. So what can we do? about this based on this sensory conflict theory? Well, of course, the best would be to really completely reduce or eliminate any kind of sensory mismatch. If that's not possible, really try to avoid larger conflicts, especially for rotations and when people wear a head mount display, these are very critical, and also any issues related to messing with the perceived upright. Smoothing, acceleration, jerks, uh, don't having a lot of them can also help a lot. And of course also ensuring that the expectations, the mental model, the predictions actually match what people perceive. Also, there are some implications for the kind of interfaces uh, you use. So for example, most prominent when you wear a head mounted display, you should really move your head to change the uh, or to rotate the viewpoint, not any kind of controller. So um, basically, uh, don't ever use a controller to uh, rotate the view in VR unless there's really no other way. And another thing that can help is providing at least some vestibular cues that are aligned with the uh, direction of simulated self-motion. Another prominent theory is the postural instability theory. Here's a little video indicating a bit of that. So the claim there is that cyber sickness is not really caused by the intersensory conflict itself, but really preceded by postural instability due to the lack of an appropriate body control scheme. So basically people have a hard time staying posturally stable. And further, that the duration and magnitude of the unstableness really predicts the motion sickness occurred occurrence and the symptoms. So what can you do about it? Well, most importantly, really reduce postural instability. So this can be done, for example, through training, to uh, through practice, to improving the balance and posture and so on, but also improving the predictability of the self-movement of the object movement. So really providing a mental model that helps. Eye movement theory is another theory here nicely illustrated with the common chicken where the eye in general really tries to stabilize the scene on the retina. Now cyber sickness or VR sickness then can occur when these eye movements that are needed to stabilize the image on the retina are really unnaturally unnatural or there's a conflict between the expected versus actual eye movements or image movements. So basically, whenever the eyes have to move unnaturally, for example, different than the real world, to still stabilize the image on the set retina, that's a problem. So what to do about it? Basically, avoid the need for these unnatural eye movements or conflicts. Evolutionary or poison theory is another prominent one. So basically, this goes back into trying to understand where the symptoms come from. So from an evolution standpoint, incongruent sensory input and dizziness or nausea really naturally occurred when, well, you ate something or drank something that you probably shouldn't have. So in a way it makes sense that, that you want to rest, that you want to relax, and maybe even throwing up uh, might actually make sense. So basically this theory explains why we get certain sickness symptoms. It doesn't have as clear implications. Uh, one suggestion uh, might be that maybe incremental exposure to new users might help. 
And finally, the rest frame or stable vert hypothesis. The idea there is that virtual reality sickness isn't really caused by the sensory conflict directly or by all kinds of sensory conflicts, but particularly by the ones or the conflict between the reference frames implied by the different senses. So typical example is on a ship. So as most people have experienced, the ship itself might not be a really good reference frame because it's not stable, so especially if uh, there's a lot of wind and wave action going. So that's also one of the problems why if you're in an inside cabin, the visual cues suggest you're upright, but your vestibular system might tell you otherwise. One of the many reasons why people can charge a lot of money for really uh, big windows that so you can still see the outside stable horizons. So what does that mean? What can you do? Basically, whatever is perceived as the world, as the background or rest frame should really be stable or perceived as stable in virtual reality. So even adding an additional uh, background or providing such a reference frame, even if it's overlaid or just visible, adding windows in VR, but having something that sta is stable and matches, especially the vestibular cues, so the physical movement the inertial system can uh, be really important. And then another implication is that you can actually vary less about object motions as long as the stable reference frame stays the same. So these are kind of the five most predominant uh, theories about motion sickness. One question that often comes up is the sensation of self-motion. Is that really a cause of motion sickness? And the data is relatively clear that there's no direct causality. So visually induced motion sickness can even occur without vection and vection can with, uh, occur without motion sickness. It's kind of like when you're in a car, it's not the act of being in a car and driving that makes you sick or the passenger, but it's really how you drive and whether you can predict what the driver is uh, doing when you're a passenger and so on. However, really strong virtual reality sickness is really rare without any perceived self-motion. So eviction sometimes has been proposed as a necessary but not sufficient prerequisite. So basically, if you reduce vection, as you can, for example, do by reducing the field of view, um, then this is very likely to also prevent severe instances of motion sickness. So for example, if you're looking at a computer model on a screen or a tablet or a phone, the field of view is not large enough to induce self-motion um, and this really helps to reduce severe motion sickness. But you also, of course, it has a drawback of also reducing presence and immersion. So based on all these motion sickness theories, what can we do? So are there any design guidelines? There's actually a whole lot. I'd like to just go over a few ones. One is really avoid specific frequencies, like 0.2 hertz, so every five seconds up and down. Uh, these are the most effective in really making people sick, so try to avoid those. At least for some people, adaptation, habituation can really help, so repeated exposure, gradually ramping up the exposure can also help. There's lots of technical things that can be done, and the current technology has helped a lot with reducing inconsistencies caused by, for example, latencies, lags, especially in terms of tracking, distortions, flicker, uh, all these kind of things. In terms of how you create the emotions, really reducing strong or unnecessary acceleration, jerks, breaking, and so on can help a lot. As mentioned before, head rotations should really be uh, should really control the visual scene rotations, not any kind of joystick or thumbstick movements. Active navigation can help. So really, designing suitable locomotion interface can help. As we've seen, improving postural stability, for example, by providing postural support can help. Providing some kind of stable rest or background reference frame can really help. Also providing some kind of minimal uh, motion cueing or vestibular cues can really help, not just to reduce motion sickness, but also enhance self-motion perception. Um, having a comfortable, maybe slightly lower than average temperature, increasing airflow has been shown to help. Reducing the amount of self-motion so vection can also help, but of course all of these have also drawbacks. Uh, some people argue that a fixation co uh, cross or an artificial nose can also help. And of course there's ginger and all kinds of other medications or remedies that can help. And there's a lot more. Um, so there's a few more references here.
So I hope this little overview helped to provide a context of why people get sick in virtual reality and what we might be able to do about it. Thanks.